Welcome back to Streamers Reloaded, my name is Tom and let's get right into the news. And we begin today with some updates on the doc drama. First, there is a theory out there that this is somehow some big legal issue. Since that, some have called up local police where Doc lives to try find out whether he has been arrested. Kevin Hitt has tweeted, I can tell you this, after getting off the phone with the sheriff department in that jurisdiction where Doc lives, he has not and was not arrested, nor ever been in custody in that jurisdiction. This idea is backed up because Doc has logged on to his Discord. But then we have an update from Doc himself tweeting, Champions Club. Twitch have not notified me on the specific reason behind their decision. Firm handshakes to all the support during this difficult time. Dr. Disrespect. Also, onto some of Doc's sponsors and brand deals. Since Doc has been banned, a few companies have jumped the gun and removed Doc branding from their sites. A good example is Razer, who took the page down with Doc on it, but has since put it back up. As well, Doc has been removed from the Lamo website, which sells figurines of popular streamers. This one has not been put back up. And finally, Mountain Dew Game Fuel have removed Doc from their banner on Twitter, but have since put that one back up as well. Next up, we got one from Ice Poison, who, as we found out in Wednesday's episode Ice wants to be unbanned off of Twitch. We found out he sent in a ban appeal but now has released an official statement on Twitter in the form of a twitlonger and video. He posted, open letter to Twitch, video and statement, where Ice is requesting someone at Twitch hears him out and reinstates his channel. Here is a snippet of that clip. Hi, my name is Paul Danino, otherwise known as Ice Poseidon on the internet. I'm making this video as my apology to Twitch in the hopes that somebody will listen. Three years ago, I was banned on Twitch for enabling a very toxic community. And a toxic community that has affected the industry, myself, my friends, and other creators as a whole. And for that, I'm sorry. I've learned a lot over the past couple of years as a streamer. And with experience comes maturity. And with maturity comes a different mindset. And my mindset now is completely different to what it was three years ago. For the past year, I've been streaming on Mixer, and I found out after reforming my community and changing the actions that I do, I have found happiness again in streaming. Happiness that I haven't had in over two years. I forgot what it was like to have a supportive and positive community. And now I finally understand again. And I totally get why people don't have toxic communities. My point is, I've learned a lot in the past couple of years. And I've been a streamer for almost five years now. And I'm please asking Twitch to just give me a second chance. Following on, we got a big one from the offline TV group. This one coming from that of the member Yvonne, sharing some of her experiences about another prominent member, that being Fed My Stir. Yvonne posted to Twitter, My Truth, followed by a twitlonger all about Fed. So let's get right into it. The twitlonger begins, I want to start off by saying, Fed was the first friend I felt like I made at offline TV. We got along really well and quickly became really, really good friends. We would go on late night food runs and watch movies together in my room since I had a TV. He fell asleep frequently there and it became a pretty normal thing. We always stayed on our sides of the bed and nothing ever really happened until it did. The second and third paragraph goes into one main situation for this twitlonger. For that reason, I'm going to read them in full. So Yvonne posted, I was lying in my bed with the lights off. The door opened and Fed came in, drunk from going out that night. He crawled into my bed and laid there for a bit. He then grabbed my hand and held it and I didn't move because I was shocked. He then brushed my hand up against his cheek and kissed it after. I was still in a state of shock, trying to process what's happening because this guy is supposed to be my friend. He always knew I had a boyfriend at the time. Next he stuck his hand inside my sleeve and touched the side of my chest and although it wasn't exactly my chest it was close enough to make me feel extremely uncomfortable and feeling that that was not the place where a friend should be touching me. I still couldn't move at this point and in my head I was just begging for him to not go any further praying he would stop there. He did, retracted his hand and made it seem like he was sleeping. Ten minutes later he woke up and said whoa how did I get here? I asked do you remember anything and he said no and left my room. The next day I went up to his room and asked him if he remembered last night. He said no. I told myself that if he forgot then maybe he didn't know what he was doing because he was drunk. And I didn't want to bring it up because I don't want to make it weird between us. A few weeks later I was lying in bed again. He came in drunk again. He laid down beside me and told me he was sorry for what happened last time and that he overstepped boundaries. So then I thought to myself, did he remember this whole time and lied about it? I didn't say anything and 10 minutes later he did it again. Minus the t-shirt part. Again I'm scared to say anything 
and he fell asleep next to me. The next day he also acted like nothing ever happened, and I asked him at some point if he remembered anything, and he said no, again. This follows on with Yvonne saying she kept the secret because she thought it could damage offline TV. It was weird because there were certain times where he could trigger me, but other times seeing him was fine. It triggered me when he knocked on my door, barely waiting, and despite no response, he'd just come in. I remember I tried locking my door a few times and he gave me a hard time for doing so. Why the F is your door locked? Multiple times when he come in at night without me saying he could. Everyone else in the house always knocks and waits for a response, but not him. I kept this all to myself mostly because I didn't want to ruin the piece. I wanted to avoid the situation and I thought he would change after what happened with me. He didn't. He proceeded to overstep boundaries with other girls in our friend group and each girl kept it to themselves because they would think, oh, it's just fed or he's just lonely slash drunk. He even did it to Lily when she was going through a hard breakup with Albert. Fed also walked into her room while she was drunk. Again thinking back, it felt like he was trying to take advantage of Lily when she was in a very vulnerable state. One night the girls were hanging out together and when the topic of Fed came up, we realised we all had our stories about him. Whether it was him lying about certain situations to be in his favour, or lying to us about girls leading him on when he was the one who got rejected, or manipulating us into having certain ideas of people slash situations. Pokey especially suffered a lot from this. And that's where we pause, because there's a clip coming from Pokimane with an example of Fed my stuff falling asleep in other offline TV's members' beds. So I sleep at normal times, and I've told you guys this before. Fed has a pro uh, not a problem, a characteristic where he likes to sleep in other people's beds. So I sleep, I went to bed at um 12:30, 1. I wake up at 11, and I know Fed stayed up until like 7 a.m. He wakes up because he hears that I'm up. I start actually being a human being, you know, like getting food, doing my hair, doing my makeup, well, not the, well, I guess it's hair. Doing my makeup, getting dressed, blah, blah. Then on to the last part of the twit longer, Yvonne makes it very clear the intention here is not to destroy Fed. The offline TV group had put Fed through an intervention and Fed was very apologetic and understood what he had done wrong. But due to the way Fed has acted since, Yvonne doesn't feel like Fed was actually sorry and so this statement has been written so Fed takes accountability for his actions and learns. So that's it for the twit longer. If you want to read this last part, there you go. But following on, very shortly after, like only four minutes after, offline TV released a statement saying, we strive to be the place where everyone can feel comfortable and safe. With that in mind, Fed has been removed from offline TV, he will also no longer be living with us. We wholeheartedly support Yvonne, her statement, and anyone else who has the courage to share their story. After this, not only did Yvonne release a twit longer, but later on Lily Pichu released one as well. Not going to go over that, but since releasing that statement, Lily has also deleted the statement. So after these, Fed has also released a statement saying, I want to start off this statement by apologizing for my absence the past few days. Earlier this week, some of my friends sat me down and expressed that I had on several occasions made them feel uncomfortable or uneasy. In light of recent events, this pained me greatly, as it was not and has never been my intention to hurt those closest to me. I fully understand the importance of having their voices heard, and I believe I should take a step back, give them space and listen to their story. I've made it a point this year to be better, and as I often mentioned, I'm trying to take more responsibility in my life. I owe it to both my friends and everyone who supports me to own up to my actions, and that starts by listening to those I've hurt. I want to make it clear that my intentions were never to act maliciously or predatorily. I am flawed. I have issues that impede my friendships, issues with myself, but I am not a predator and never wanted this to happen. Now we come on to today and following on we mainly have some clips to go over. Today Pokemon has decided to go live to read a statement and add some additional thoughts over the course of a 50 minute stream. There is a few main points to go over. So first we have Pokey giving some additional context into what exactly are just fed things. Followed by Fed saying things between him and Pokey were bad and finishes up trying to get Yvonne kicked out of the offline TV house. At the Just Friends house, he would come over anytime things were off or tense at the offline TV house and just like be in their rooms, never knocking, just there, um, which they came to accept as just fed things. While he was there, he would always imply things were bad between me and him and lie or um, push false narratives that make him look good and make me look really bad. Later, when the Yvonne incident happened and when they did not know that this happened, he would come over to their house and tell them things like, Yvonne is taking up a content creator spot in our house. She does literally nothing but play league um, and talk about how much he wanted her out of the house. 
This follows on with Pokey explaining that not only did Fed try to get Yvonne removed from the house, but he even then tried to get her fired or even removed from the offline TV group completely. The Yvonne incident happened and Fed would start talking to me. I'm so sorry for being emotional. He would talk to me about how Yvonne was lazy and not working enough and playing league all the time. And I was concerned. And he would say, oh, she like won't work on OTV stuff with me or brainstorm and blah, blah, blah. And this discussion got to the point of us almost letting Yvonne go from the company because we thought she just like wasn't interested enough in working with us. When in reality, her behavior was entirely because of the incident that happened. Between the last part that will be covered from all this offline TV drama is that Pokemon shared at one point, Fed had told one of his friends that Pokey and him were dating. But here, Pokey only found out because this guy went to her and asked her about what was going on between them. Very busy, and I was like, me busy? Like, you and Fed were, you know, two peas in a pod all night. And he goes, oh yeah, like, what's going on with you guys? And I was like, what do you mean what's going on? And he, the guy informed me that Fed told him that we were together when we weren't and that he told the guy not to tell anyone, not to talk to anyone about it, not to talk to me about it. And following on, we got one from the TSM member Diego Soares, or just Diego. One of his ex-girlfriends has decided to expose some of his past behavior at fan meetups and tours. She tweeted, context on these photos, girls age approximately 13 to 16, Diego approximately 20. This person shouldn't be gaining followers on platforms again. This is posted alongside a video where the YouTuber, hey there, I'm Shannon, goes over a lot of stuff about Diego, but the focus of this tweet is that Diego, while around fans that were underage, would do these stage kisses, which which Shannon explains. Um, Diego would stage kiss fans without beating around the bush. Um, the stage kiss essentially was a real kiss. He would just put his thumb right here on his bottom lip. So somehow that was better, I guess. Of course, I can't show you any of these images, but following the events of this week, TSM, which is Diego's esports team, was alerted and they responded saying, Some troubling news has come to our attention regarding Diego. We've reviewed the allegations and he's been removed from TSM, effective immediately. We stand with those impacted and the rest of the Me Too movement, and we need to work together to make our industry a safer place. Diego has also responded first with a video reaction response to Shannon's, and also alongside a twit longer with the main point reading, Hey guys, just wanted to be clear here. I've been dropped from TSM which I understand. This is due to some old pictures that resurfaced of me taking pictures with fans at meet and greets a few years back. I used to be a YouTube vlog type kind, where I would kiss them on the cheek for a picture if they wanted or a stage kiss for that picture if they wanted. Not every picture was like this of course, but if the fans wanted it, I would do it for their picture. I stopped doing it around 2017 because I got some flack for it and realized it was inappropriate. One user did respond to this twit longer saying, did you not think it was weird to kiss underage fans on the lips, especially when you're 20? And Diego responded, and to be clear, there was never a real kiss, they were always staged. So of course, TSM Diego has now been removed from TSM. And the last one for today comes from the female Rocket League streamer, Karma, with a rather unusual clip from on stream where she was struck by lightning through her controller. You hate to see the crossbar, you really do. That's After this clip, she did tweet, actually think I got struck by lightning through my controller, WTF. Then updating slightly later, update, talking to doctor, hands are burnt and controller is broken. Unlucky. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. It really does help a lot. Stay safe and I hope to see you in the next one.